so we're going to talk a little bit about Tor, and uh, used to stand for the Onion, Onion Mouser. Doesn't anymore. They changed that a few months ago. So let's talk about how it works first of all. Well, it's pretty simple. When you access the internet, I'm not going to talk about how it bounces off all the different mouses and everything else. But if someone wants to sniff your traffic when you're browsing a site that's not SSL or anything else, they, they can do that. It's pretty straightforward. People don't like this idea, so what do they do? Well, they either print SSL on the website or they go to Tor. And it overcomplicates things. Um, and some may be unnecessarily, but I quite like the protection it offers. Um, so what it does is that you get three what are called nodes. You get an entry node, you get mid node, and you get an exit node. And anything that you can get after the exit node is going to be completely unencrypted, and that's what they call it SSL, um, but it encrypts everything back from that place. So anything, at the if you intercept traffic between the exit node and the site, you know what they're trying to get, but you don't know where that's going back to. So it's a bit of a problem. Um, so there's also this other complicated issue of what's called the dark web. And people have heard that term. I know people have already told me they hit that term when they found out my, what my talk was about. So the dark web has got these nice little things called dark websites where you don't actually come out of the Tor network. You don't actually come out of the Tor network in order to access information. These are web servers which are set up specifically so that they cannot be, the, tra the traffic cannot be intercepted. Fun times. The most common way that people will access Tor, well, there's actually two common ways. There's a boot listing you can use, but the most common way is to use uh, TDB, the Tor browser bundle. And that thing is locked up tight, okay? They bring out new versions every few weeks, and they fix and patch all kinds of stuff. They have, uh, this is a modified version of Firefox, and it also has a couple of uh, other extensions in there too. No scripts is one of particular note. And you think, well, that's fine. No scripts has a list of sites already that I can run scripts on, which is there by default. Not in Tor, because they've removed all of those. The only things you can actually see in a no scripts um, uh, config file in this is a bunch of about colon pages. Fun. So, because of this, the way it works, it caches nothing. Even if you took a live image of the drive, you still get nothing. What you can find is things like you know, a visit to the Tor website where they downloaded it, they ran it, and um, executed, installed, and then were able to continue to run it after that. So you see, we've listed a few here, different things you can look at. What else is there? Well, Tor's got an interesting, or well, TVB's got an interesting couple of little things. It's got the state file, which will tell you the last time that Tor was run. It also has the Tor C file, which tells you where it was last run, run from. So you may already know that because the default installation's already listed there, but it might be useful to know. Is there anything else? Well, no. Um, <laughs> history. I, I, history is just not there, okay? And even, I don't know, less than a year ago at the DFIR summit that was held in Prague, someone gave a presentation on this, and they found or s talked about the HTTP memory-only PB thing, which you can search for, which is private browsing for Firefox, which is located in memory. It doesn't exist anymore. It's not there, which is a huge problem because that means that the only thing you can get from a computer which is not currently being used is very, very little. You know it was installed, you know it was used. The good thing, though, is that most people are stupid. Well, <laughs> let's say not technically adept. Um, so, if they think, oh, I'll run, I'll run Tor, this is great, but wait a minute, I can't access Pornhub. So, I want to install, I want to install Flash. So they go and install Flash which is great because then we get all these flash cookies and everything else and then traffic can get intercepted that's not encrypted. Wonderful. And then they think, oh crap, all these stupid things that keep popping up saying I can't access this or I can't do this. I want to go and visit this site. Well, no, you can't do that either. So they turn off the settings 
Or because these websites, these dark websites, have like hugely long, complicated um, URLs with a dot onion, that you can't remember those, so they bookmark them instead, which is really helpful. <laughs> and then there's also the, the attack vectors too. So you get away from the actual dead box computer itself. And if you work for the NSA, and if you do, I hate you too. Um, <laughs> There's plenty of attacks around, so you can own a whole bunch of, of Tor nodes. There's only 6,000 that are in active use. So if you suddenly flooded the Tor network with a bunch of nodes, you can pretty much decipher where that traffic is coming from. Then there's also stuff like all the Cisco routers, which you can use to do... Um, ah, I'm out of time. Uh, you can do attacks on to try and do asymmetric stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it.